In this video, you are going to see a privately operated high-speed railway service in Italy. You will learn about the two highest booking classes and why all of this may be the future of train travel in Europe. Welcome to this video. This time I am in Naples in southern Italy. Situated next to an active supervolcano known as the Phlegrian Fields and Mount Vesuvius, Naples is an extreme city in every way. With nearly a million inhabitants, it is Italy's third largest city by population. A good place to start a railway journey that will lead me across Italy all the way up to Milan with a stop in Rome. My trip begins at the cruise ship terminal of the port of Naples. From here you can take a direct bus to Napoli Centrale railway station. For me the bus service worked perfectly fine, in spite of the heavy thunderstorm that began just moments after boarding it. The same bus goes to the airport and the ride costs 5 euros. This is the square in front of the train station, it is called Piazza Garibaldi. The present railway station that you see here dates back to a design from 1954 and it was opened in 1960. More recently, I think somewhere around 2010, it was modified and modernized. Today it is among the top 10 stations in Italy with a yearly ridership of 50 million people. It has a lot to offer to passengers, for instance a food area, which you can see here. There are also numerous shops and even a bookstore, so you definitely won't get bored at this place. Tickets can be purchased at the machines in the main hall or in the ticket office. And as there are two high-speed railway operators in Italy, Trenitalia and Italo, you have a freedom of choice that is still unmatched in Europe. Time to go through the ticket control, which makes sure that only passengers can enter the platforms. Before boarding, let me clarify certain things about the initial lack of my itinerary. The train needs 1 hour and 15 minutes for the 212 kilometers from Naples to Rome. Before I go into the specifics of my own booking, I'd like to outline my understanding of what is offered, but take it with a grain of salt, because it's somewhat confusing. When I looked up the travel classes on the Italo website, I found the following four. Smart, Comfort, Prima and Club. In the ticket search, though, it showed slightly different travel classes on the Italo, with Salotto being a separate compartment within Club Executive class. However, this confusion doesn't change how things generally work. On the one hand, you have travel classes, while on the other, there are certain fares that, for example, in some cases, give you the right to change your ticket. Not every fare seems to be available for each travel class, though. In order to get from Naples to Rome, I booked a trip in Prima class in a flexible rate. Prima class is one level below executive class, which you are going to see later in the video. Such a ticket comes with certain perks, including more legroom and a welcome service with a selection of snacks and drinks. Track number 24 is my track of departure today, and as you can see, this train has its final destination in the city of Bergamo in northern Italy. As always when I'm boarding a train, let me introduce you to some of the technical aspects. I'm traveling on an AGV made by the French company Alstom. What I can't emphasize enough is that this train could travel with a speed of 360 km per hour. The Italian railway infrastructure though currently limits all high-speed trains to 300 km per hour. So, this is the Prima cabin with a 2-1 configuration. The seats look very neat and the cabin is obviously well maintained. And here's the seat that I booked for this trip. Prima basically means first class, but as I mentioned before, it is not the highest travel class on the Italo. Nevertheless, it is comparable to what you may know from other first-class products on European high-speed trains.
Now that you have seen most of the cabin, I would conclude that it's modern, it's clean, it's comfortable, and you can work from here, which makes this onboard product appealing to business travelers. As we are leaving Napoli Centrale, you get to see a neighborhood that is much different from what one might associate with Naples. Most people probably think about narrow streets in the historic city center, like in this footage. But Napoli also has a central business district, the Centro Direzionale di Napoli, with lots of skyscrapers. That area was designed by the Japanese architect Kenzo Tange, and it was built throughout the 80s until the mid-90s. Here we are passing another landmark. Napoli Afragola railway station was inaugurated in June 2017 and is considered the last project of the late Zaha Hadid. Let's enjoy the view from the window. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so when I introduced you to my booking, I talked about the welcome service that is part of the ticket. Here it is, it consists of a drink and a snack. The bottle of water was not part of it, that comes from my own provisions. When I'm traveling and looking out of the window, but also during the editing process, I sometimes start dreaming about the different railway services that I have tried in the past. And this time, my dreams led me to a question. How does the Italo compare with the ICE, especially regarding the price? Which train service gives you more for your money? So I looked for a ticket on the Italo from Naples to Rome on a specific date, for a specific date, which you can see here. For 55 euro and 90 cents, one could get a flexible ticket in prima class with launch access and the Italo would need just one hour and 10 minutes for a distance of 212 kilometers. Then I chose a route of a similar distance in Germany, which would be from Stuttgart to Frankfurt am Main. First class would be the comparable travel class, and a flexible ticket that also includes a visit at the Bahn Lounge would be more than double the price of the Italo. The ICE also has a longer travel time in spite of a shorter distance. And by the way, in the German train, there is no such thing called welcome service. And I say that because sometimes I read comments even from Italian people that kind of portray other European railway systems as the heaven on earth, which, at least in my opinion, they really aren't. Alright, one thing that I haven't covered so far is the onboard internet connection. Once you have registered, you can not only surf the internet, but you can use their entertainment system as well. While the menu of the set system is available in English, most of the content is meant for Italian-speaking passengers. The internet connection itself worked fine, as my usual non-partisan CNN Fox News test shows. Moreover, I was even able to watch a video on YouTube. In this case, it was e Man with his wonderful videos about yachts. Okay, we have reached the Eternal City. Unfortunately, there was a lot of traffic on the rails and we ran into some sort of congestion. That cost us a couple of minutes. We will be resuming the journey shortly. Thank you for your attention. Well, let me evaluate the first part of the journey. I think it was really good, especially for that price. Had I booked a little bit earlier, I probably would have gotten launch access in Naples as well. 
but even without it, this product is convincing. I saw a motivated and nice staff on the train. I had a drink and a snack, the cabin was comfortable, Wi-Fi worked without any problems, and all of that for less than 60 euro in a flexible rate. I don't see anything to complain about. We have arrived at Roma Termini, but the video does not end here. On this channel you get more, so grab a tea or coffee and then let's continue with the railway trip on the following day. Rome is the capital of Italy and it has a population of over 4 million people in the metropolitan city. My trip in this video continues where it ended the day before, at Roma Termini, Italy's busiest railway station. The way it was built reflects different periods of history. When they started the project in 1937, the plans were made by Angiolo Mazzoni and that was in the era of Benito Mussolini. But the station was only partially built when Mussolini's rule ended. So in the time after the Second World War, in 1947, two teams of architects won a competition to complete the station, which was done by 1950. And all of that explains why the lateral structures of Roma Termini come with a totally different design language than the main hall, which was built after World War II. Through the years, the station has undergone various changes and in some aspects it reminds me of an airport terminal. Just like in Naples, there are countless shops and food options here. If you go down these escalators or stairs, you will find even more shops and the metro station. The trip from Rome to Milan takes just around 3 hours and 10 minutes for a distance of 548 kilometers. This time I'm about to travel in club executive class. Once again I booked a flexible ticket, not really because I wanted to, but it was the only fare left, that's why it is rather expensive. I paid 139 euro and 90 cents. For that money I got an even more luxurious cabin than in Prima class. Lounge access was also part of the ticket and the onboard service is extended in that travel class. Are all those little amenities enough to justify the higher price? Well, I'm going to give you my opinion on that later in the video. For now, let me show you the Italo lounge at this railway station. Ciao, hello. Like most railway lounges, it is not on the same level as airline lounges, but you can form your own opinion on that in the following 47 seconds. Okay, once again, it's an AGV train, so you already know about its capabilities. And here's the club executive cabin that I filmed upon arrival in Milan. The cabin comes with a 2x1 configuration and there is only one single seat in the entire club executive cabin that doesn't face another seat. My own seat was located in a group of four seats around a table that I shared with a very fashionable Italian businessman. That leads me to a disadvantage of this onboard product. You may pay more than in Prima class, but you can end up having less privacy than in the cheaper product.
here we are at Roma Tiburtina. It's another very important railway station in Rome that is served by many high-speed trains and other trains as well. Generally speaking, it was more difficult to record this video than it usually is because there were a lot of people around me and I always try to be as unobtrusive as possible. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I'm traveling with a privately operated train. How is that even possible, you may ask? Most railway companies in Europe and beyond are state-owned, aren't they? The most important factor were regulations by the European Union. Over the past 30 years, the EU has passed several so-called railway packages that pushed for a liberalization of the railway markets in the member states. It is a very complex legal topic, but it can be summarized by stating that the EU wants more competition on European rails. Italy transformed these regulations into national law in a consequent manner and finally that opened the door for private railway operators. As a result, some experienced Italian business people decided to create such a company in 2006. It was named NTV, standing for Nuovo Trasporto Viaggiatori, which can be translated as New Passenger or Traveler Transport. Among the founders was Luca di Montesemolo, a name that you may have already heard in the context of the Italian automakers Fiat and Ferrari. NTV ordered 25 AGV trains and in April of 2012 the first commercial train service was launched. In Italy this has led to lower ticket prices, while the overall railway market has grown significantly. It also had a huge impact on domestic flights. Some analysts even claim that these bullet trains have contributed to the demise of Alitalia. But why can it have an importance that goes beyond the borders of Italy? Well, as outlined before, all EU member states are obliged to follow the regulations from Brussels. Some do it less ambitiously than Italy did, but overall the markets are opening and rumor has it that Italian railway operators want to expand to other countries. Alright, back to my trip on the Italo. Now we need to talk about legroom. It was okay, but imagine what happens when another passenger sits on the opposite side of the table. What you see now is the city of Florence. Unfortunately, both the lighting conditions and my own camera work didn't do this marvelous city justice here. Florence is a very special place situated in the region of Tuscany. If you're interested in Renaissance art and architecture, that's the place to go. Let's continue with the onboard catering. I ordered an espresso, which was of good quality but I would of course prefer to drink it from a real espresso cup. But it seems to be a trend these days that everything is served in cardboards and paper cups. Let's see what's inside. Okay, that's a napkin. And what do we have here? A panino, which is nice, as it gives the Italo brand that Italian touch. Another feature that sets Club Executive class apart from the other classes is the individual entertainment screen that you can find hidden in the armrest. Let me show it to you. As you can see, it seems to be the same entertainment platform that you can access with your personal electronic devices in the other travel classes. I have shown that earlier. So the only additional benefit here is, well, just the screen I'm afraid. 
And even that is questionable, because for a reason I don't know, the loading times of the entertainment platform were really long. The catering continued and the train attendant walked around with a variety of snacks. I think they're the same as those offered in the Italo lounge. And now it's time for the lavatory check. These trains still feel relatively new and modern. The train attendants did a good job keeping them clean throughout the duration of the trip. Alright, we are approaching Milano Centrale, so let me give you my conclusion. My overall verdict is that these were good trips without any problems. As far as club executive class is concerned, the cabin configuration isn't really made for solo travelers in my opinion, at least not for more than one. With that being said, for a trip with friends or family, it is a nice travel product, and Salotto, which is a separate compartment, gives you even more privacy as a group. But otherwise, I would say that Prima Class is really an excellent and cost-efficient travel option, that you can even book with lounge access. I believe it would make sense to work on the seat configuration in Club Executive Class, or to change the cabin altogether in order to make it an even more luxurious travel product. These are just my thoughts, feel free to share your opinion in the comment section below. Ok, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed this production, if so, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon as well. Thank you for tuning in and have a great day wherever you're watching.